In this video, we will show how to set the PA bias currents with QWISC. At the top, you can see I'm connected to uh, Hermes Light 2 with a running version of QWISC 4.1.12. This is the MAC address, uh, the code version that was announced, and the board ID. ID6 is for Hermes Light, and the IP address it's using on my network. I also have the waterfall engaged here. Uh, we need to go to the config screen and um, go to the running HL2 radio and um, we're going to enable the power amplifier and also enable uh, BIOS adjust. Now Quisk is set up so that these settings here um, this is sticky so the power amp will be enabled the next time I turn Quisk on, but the bias adjust will again go to false. Uh, this is because you, you adjust the bias only infrequently, and so it, it should be false most of the time. But when it's enabled, these uh, power amp bias controls are um, enabled also. Now um, I have this other setting, disable TR in low power, and we'll keep this at false. This is not related to the bias adjustment, but um, it's there in case we want to uh, have the RX path through the default TR relay always enabled to RX. So this you would set to true if you want to have a full duplex radio where the RX is coming in through the TR relay path and the TX output is going through the low power output. For uh, the bias adjustment, we need to put the spot level all the way down to zero. This is because we, we want no signal transmitted while we adjust the bias. Um, I'm also going to do something here just to make sure that the, the setting has been sent. I'm going to up this to one and lower it to zero. Down here on the screen you saw there was some indication that a response was received from the Hermes Light 2. This is just to make sure that the value has been sent. Okay, so now uh, when I go to hit PTT, I just get a little bit of current here. Um, the meter is not precise to exactly one milliamp, so we see a little bit of variation, especially at the lowest readings. So uh, I'm going to increase one of these until I start seeing some current. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit faster here and enter, uh, let's enter 75. Okay, so now my current has gone up to 20. So I'll keep going up. And I want to go and bias this to 100 milliamps. Okay, so now I'm, I'm at around 100 milliamps. Um, you notice my temperature has been going up a bit. And I'm, I'm going to kind of leave it there. I want to see if this is kind of a stable setting for that. 100 milliamps seems, seems good there. So 133. So I remember that setting, 133 for this. And then I disengage transmit, and I'm going to put this down to zero. And I'm going to go here, and um, we'll start here maybe at 80. And we'll re-engage. So I have a low current again. And here I'm going to increase until um, I get to around 100 also. Okay, so 116 on this side, I'm getting similar currents to what I saw on the other side. So we'll leave this at 116. I'll set this back to 133. And now we'll engage the transmit again. And um, we're just below 200 milliamps, around 200 milliamps. So this, this looks good. And uh, now I'll go ahead and I'll write this. 
So this should write it to the Hermes Light 2 um, EEPROM so that uh, next time you power on the, the Hermes Light 2, um, you will see the same currents. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, quit Hermes Light, I mean quit the Quisk, and then um, I'm going to run into the next room and uh, repower my Hermes Light 2. Okay, I'm back after repowering the Hermes Light 2. I'm going to restart Quisk. And the reason we're doing this is since this is a first time you might be programming the BIOS, we want to make sure that the um, BIOS currents have stuck. So I'm, I'm basically checking that the settings I wrote to the EEPROM uh, are going to be engaged the next time I run. And so I had to do a full power cycle of the Hermes Light 2. So um, here we see that the spot value uh, should still be zero. I'm going to go into full duplex mode. Um, and uh, when I transmit, yeah, I, I still see around 200 milliamps of current there. And if I go into the config um, for the radio, uh, we see that the power amp is still true, but the enable bias adjust is uh, false. So, you know, it doesn't read the bias values that were set, so I, I see a zero here, but that test confirmed that the EEPROM was written on the HL2. So I can go back here, and now that we have a full uh, power amplifier engaged, we can do some transmit with that. Um, here I'm in CW. And uh, I'll increase the spot mode now to 100%. And um, when I transmit now, um, I should see a large signal on um, full duplex. S some of these are artifacts, not necessarily important to, to pay attention to. And you can see my temperature rising, and I can see my uh, current that is being drawn by the power amplifier at full power in this mode. Uh, I don't yet have these two parameters hooked up so you can ignore them for now. Eventually they'll be connected. But uh, you know the temperature should, shouldn't should rise above uh, 40 some degrees Celsius. Eventually I think there'll be a, a limit set in the firmware uh, where it will reduce power maybe starting at 50 degrees Celsius just to protect your PA. So that's it. That's how you adjust the uh, PA bias current. And uh, once you do that, you're ready to transmit. One note, um, I did this in a remote room. I suggest that when you do it the first time, you do it right by your Hermes Light 2, just so that you can kind of feel if anything is getting too hot or anything is smoking. Uh, since it might be the first time you're engaging the, the PA, you want to just be there to be sure that something's not going wrong. If you have a current limiting, uh, current limited power supply, you should probably use that also.